I guess Apple is making another compelling case to care about the Pro Max this year again. Because yes, if you were wondering what the iPhone 13 Pro Max's camera will do, this new report gives us an idea. Speaking of Apple, if you thought that mixed reality headsets were years away, how about if we claim just months away? And OnePlus just gave us an explanation on to why they skipped Wear OS, and we kind of agree. I'm Jaime Rivera, and it's as if someone told leakers to take a couple of weeks off, and it's not funny. This is Parker Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals. I find it funny that Apple would never give out good deals for their products on their website, but you've got Amazon. They currently have the M1 MacBook Pro that I'm using for $100 off, leaving the entry-level variant for $1,200 shipped. The Moto Razr 5G is also $400 off, leaving it at $1,000. And I know, for that price, I want it too, but you better not like your photos to justify that purchase. And moving on to Best Buy for a second, the Apple Watch Series 6 Nike Edition is currently $50 off, leaving it at $379. But if you want uh, to get an $100 discount, you go for the Series 5, which leaves that at $299. Now, Samsung Spring event is still going on, where you can get the Galaxy S21 for $100, the S21 Plus for $300, and the Ultra for $500 if you have an eligible device for trade-in. And we also have have deals for Jabra earbuds, which for those of you asking during my trainings, those are my favorites for running and other devices from OnePlus and others in the description. And since we already began sort of talking wearables, let's shift the spotlight to Google and what the company plans to do here. It's been almost a year since Google released the true wireless Pixel Buds, and it looks like they want to refresh them in a more affordable way. According to a new report from 9to5Google, these will be called the Pixel Buds A, you know, like the Pixel 4a. They will apparently have the same design to the Pixel Buds, but with a few colorway tweaks. And when it comes to the features, they will offer support for touch controls for voice calls and, of course, music playback in addition to summoning the Google Assistant. But it's unclear as to what corners will Google cut in order to make them more affordable. Finally, the report mentions that we could expect these sometime around June or earlier. So let's see, because uh, you never know with Google. Now let's talk about another wearable that decided to ditch Google for all the right reasons. OnePlus finally launched their first smartwatch last week and we're still waiting on it, but there's a ton of people asking over the fact that it doesn't run Wear OS. Well, the company's product manager just wrote in an official forum that the fact that they chose their RTOS system over Wear OS is because of the ability to offer better and longer battery life for their users, which is totally understandable. They also know that RTOS allows them to use what they call high frame rate debugging experiences, which allow them to raise the display capacity to 50 hertz, giving you a smoother user experience overall. So yeah, in case you missed it, this new watch features a 1.39 inch AMOLED display along with a 402 milliamp hour battery that lasts up to 14 days with regular use or five days with sleep tracking and blood oxygen being measured. And sure, I know that some of you are concerned about third-party applications, but come on, let's be serious. How many of you actually use more than one application on Wear OS? What, none? Exactly, that's what I mean. Now, moving on, let's talk about Apple's mixed reality headset. You know, at first I felt there were just too many rumors for how far away we were from a possible launch, but things start making a lot more sense now. I mean, even with all the rumors of 8K displays and eye tracking technology, that possible launch in 2022 made it sound more like vaporware. Well, now we have a new report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman that claims that we could expect it sometime in the next several months, with this being their first major new device since 2015. Apparently, it won't happen at WWDC as Cupertino wants to make such announcement with employees, partners, and the media being present in the room, and WWDC is going to be an online event. However, they promise some insight on their platform, and I mean, hey, they could introduce what they've been doing with AR and VR or what the plans are. So far, we've heard sources like Ming Chi Kuo that say that this headset could weigh 150 grams and it'll bring 15 camera modules, a mesh headband, and everything else we've already heard of. And yes, they do look like AirPods Max. We'll see. But finally, for the hottest news today, no. 
we won't be talking about the cheese grater iPhone. Yes, we did see the patents, but come on. I, I doubt that it'll happen, or at least not anytime soon. Let's focus on what we should expect this year with a new report from Ming-Chi Kuo on the iPhone 13 Pro Max or 12S or whatever. Up until now, all the reports we've been getting claim that the smaller iPhone 13 Pro will bring the 12 Pro Max's camera along with software and hardware improvements like the 7-element lens, and it left us wondering what upgrades is the 13 Pro Max going to be getting? Well, according to Quo's latest report, the iPhone 13 Pro Max will make an interesting jump to a brighter and faster f1.5 aperture on the main sensor, and this will differentiate it as it seems the rest of the 13 series will stick to f1.6 aperture on the primary camera. Now, the thing is, I'm not sure if it'll translate into better photos because as it stands, the 12 Pro Max just takes photos slightly faster, but not necessarily better. If anything, aperture that sharp makes close-ups a problem sometimes. Now, as far as quality, Quo also mentions that all models will bring that 7P lens, which improves light transmission rate that can translate to better image quality in the end. The shipment for these lenses is expected to begin on Q2 2021, so sometime soon. And uh, other than that, we've heard that most of the camera upgrades will include better wide angles and telephotos, as well as your typical software updates. The thing is, in today's question, I mean, would you buy the iPhone 13 Pro Max for the camera? Because honestly, it was the major reason why I decided to choose the 12 Pro Max this year, because it was finally different than the other iPhones. And uh, as it turns out, it's not really that much better, if anything. Uh, so that's my concern, and you obviously have to pay more money. So leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me want more leaks. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.